Hi everyone, I'm Sasha. Thanks for being here. We're going to explore some yoga postures today to assist with any type of back pain you might be experiencing. I did this practice a couple weeks ago. It helped tremendously, so I hope it's useful for you. Please take care of yourselves. Reach out to me with any questions. If you need to modify something, please do so. If the pain is really serious, I encourage you to please consult a doctor or a professional like a chiropractor. Um, osteopath, kinesiologist, I've had a lot of success with those in the past, so take care of yourself, bottom line. But this is something that worked well for me. I had some back pain in the middle of my back and my upper back near my shoulder and my neck, and this helped relieve a lot of the pressure and just create more space, more ease. So I hope it does the same for you. We're going to use two blocks, so if you have something that looks like a block, if you don't have a yoga block, a blanket or something that you can fold nicely, like a towel or a pillow. I also have a strap. So you can start seated. We're gonna sit on the block like so. If my hands were my ankles, it looks like it's called Virasana, and we're on the shins. So this is what was helpful for me. You can also use two blocks, you can use eight blocks, but it's just to create equilibrium in the pelvis and the legs. So. I like this posture for my back personally. You might prefer to cross your shins, especially if you have something going on with your knees. But when you're seated, make sure you're equal. Lift the belly slightly so there's space in the lower back and you're not thrusting the ribs forward. And then take the strap or whatever that looks, something that looks like it. If you have a strap, you can create a loop like this, a circle. That's about the width of the shoulders. If you don't have that, you can just use something and pull on the width of the shoulders. If when you lift your arms, your arms are coming alongside of your ears, you can just widen the hands so that the arms can go back in a way that the shoulder blade comes nicely onto the upper back. So we're gonna use the loop if you have it so that the metal part isn't touching the skin and press the wrists out into the strap with the palms facing each other. So just settle yourself here for a moment with the fingers reaching forward, kind of like a zombie, <laughs> with the shins pressing down, the pelvis equal and seated. Lift the belly slightly as though the armpits just got longer. And then when you inhale next, lift the arms up by the ears and readjust as you need to. So the palms still face in, the armpits roll in, and you're, as you're pressing out into the strap, you're also lifting the fingers up. The tail is to the side, so the tail of the strap isn't like in your face. So as you extend the fingers up, literally like you could touch the ceiling, keep rolling the armpits, I'm exaggerating, roll the armpits in and lift the whole waist up. It's as though as the thighs go down like roots of a tree, the belly and the torso and the arms and fingers go up. You can pulse the arms back just slightly a couple times without moving the ribs. Again, so the shoulder blades come on the upper back. If this is too much, just bring the arms down and do it again. But the point is to create space. So as the lower part of the body goes down, the upper half goes up. Breathe in and out of the nose. Take one more breath. Go up, up, up. And then bring the arms down slowly. And then you'll take this to the back. So I'll show you standing up, but you can stay seated. You will take the strap around the wrists on the lower back so the palms face each other and you can just kind of let the strap rest on your butt for a moment. If this is too much, you can also sit in a chair or on a stool or you can stand doing all of this. So the fingers reach down, the palms face each other, the strap is resting on the butt for a moment. And as you roll the shoulders back, lift the waist up. So again, you're not thrusting the ribs forward here. It's just an opening, a widening of the chest. And start to lift the arms. You can kind of see in the shadow if I turn, don't turn, but I'm just turning to show you, that the arms lift. So the arms are lifting, I'll turn to the side, just without the block so you can see for a moment that I'm extending my arms back and lifting my waist up instead of push, pushing my ribs forward. So take a few more breaths like that. If it's too much for you, you just bring the, hip, the hands further down towards the floor. But keep lifting the spine up tall. Again, the lower body goes down. And even though the arms aren't going up, you can imagine them going up. And that's the uh, activity of the torso. So just take one more breath here and lift the back ribs up and extend the fingers back behind you and down. 
feels nice. And then you can release that slowly. Put that to the side. Put the hands on the thighs and let the eyes close and just breathe in through the whole torso. So you can envision the breath going side to side in the ribs, front to back, top to bottom, from the pelvis to the chest. In and out of the nose with calm eyes. You can pick a gazing point in front of you or keep the eyes gently closed. Envision also the back of the neck lengthening, not to press the chin down, but just to extend all sides of the neck. And if you have any pain in a specific area of your back, you might envision this next and last breath here, making space, creating space around that pain, or relieving that pain to any degree. And if you'd like, you can bring the hands to the chest here and let the chin come down into the chest, acknowledging yourself for showing up and taking care of yourself in this way today. And put the hands back on the legs, lift the head up and let the eyes crack open slowly. So slowly come off of your seat wherever you are with the blocks and the blanket nearby. You don't need the strap at this moment. And just begin by uh, being on hands and knees, so like a tabletop position. And as you press down into the floor, lift the belly just slightly again, so you're not dropping the back down. So there's some resistance here. It's a calm practice, but there is still some activity to maintain space in the spine. So as you push down into the floor with the shins and the hands, lift the belly slightly and you can extend the chin forward a little bit. Keep the eyes relaxed and take a breath here again into all sides of the torso. And you can start with a really gentle cow and cat pose. If it's too much for you, you don't do it and just stay here. So just three times long, inhale, extend the chest forward and extend the tailbone back. And again, if this is too much, you just stay where you are, but go to the extent that you can go today. And as you exhale, lift the belly round the spine and push into the floor. Let the shoulder blades separate and let the head drop. Notice if you're resisting that. Two more times, long and slow. So inhale, the shoulder blades draw back towards the pelvis. The pelvis goes back and the chest goes forward. And when you exhale, you pull the belly up, press down into the mat, and let the back puff as you drop the head. Really release the head here. Last time. Inhale, so there's a lot of details to explore. Tailbone back, lift the belly here just slightly, again, so you're not dropping all of your weight down in the back into the floor. And then when you exhale, you push and round into a cat pose. This feels good for me, release the neck. And then come back to center and just extend one leg back, so I'm doing my left leg first, kind of like a plank pose. I have the couch here actually to push against, which is really nice, so if you have that, you can use it and keep lifting the belly up and really extend through the back leg. Again, this is lengthening from the heel through the back all the way to the chest. You can even shift a little bit forward and back, but keep resisting the floor so you're not dropping down. It's not a cat pose, but it's not a cow pose. It's like a hybrid neutral spine. And then just change the legs. So you have the right heel. If you're fortunate enough to have something to press into, that was just <laughs> luck for me, uh, push into that because it will actually help create some resistance and some feedback. And if you'd like to shift a little forward and back, you do that. If this is too much, you just stay where you are, or you take a few more gentle cow pose and cat pose. And then you come back to hands and knees, walk the hands just a little bit forward, and you're gonna come all the way onto the belly. So just bend the elbows and come down in the best way you can. Take your time. So you're, when you're on your belly, you can put the hands under the forehead and just rest the forehead on the hands and rest the feet behind you and wag the tailbone from right to left and breathe into the back here. This is really soothing for the back ribs and the back lungs because they're exposed. And you have the feedback on the opposite side on the belly to make the feeling a little bit more pronounced. So just do that one more time. Take a long, easy breath in and out of the nose and let it travel through the back. 
And just for a moment, if it feels nice for you, you can open the right leg to the right. It's called, or I call it like a fallen tree pose. So the right thigh is in line with the hip. The knee is in line with the hip and the shin is just parallel to the other leg. And let the belly relax here. If it's too much for the back, you don't do it. You can also turn the head that direction and just take a breath here and enjoy opening the pelvis a little bit. Notice if you're clenching any muscles there and let that release. And notice if you're kind of resisting that sinking down into the floor and really let yourself rest. I, I noticed that I was kind of resisting that a little bit. And then you'll do the other side, so just switch, extend the leg, you can take your time. If you're happy in a pose, you can always pause. And again, let the belly relax, the pelvis relax, you can turn your head that direction if you want. Relax the shoulders. Notice anywhere that you might be clenching. It might be shoulders, it might be belly, it might be hips, groin area. And take one more breath here, into the back. And come back to center. We'll just take one lengthening pose. If you have blocks, you have an option to put one block in between your upper inner thighs. You kind of have to squirm around to do that. So if it hurts your back, don't do it. So you press that into the upper thighs. It's on the, it's near the pelvis and it's on the um, smallest width. And then the other one is on the widest width, the widest width, like what we were sitting on with the hands alongside of it like this. And you'll extend the arms forward and extend the legs back and put the forehead down. And really just extend yourself here, like almost the blocks are being pulled in opposite directions. And breathe into the back. If it feels nice, you can lift the head and really extend the fingers once you look at the block. It might help you to extend it a little bit more. Press the hands into the block and really extend. You can also use the strap here if you need more space and pull it apart so you're getting a width in the chest and an extension of the arms and an extension of the legs. So you're pressing the legs into the block and extending the toenails back. Take one more breath and breathe into the back of the body. This is not a back bend. It's just to create length and put the head down if it was up and just relax for a moment. So relax the arms and legs, take a breath. And now we'll turn right onto the back. Some back bending practices can be good for back pain, but what I was going through, it did not feel good at the time. I needed something a little bit calmer. So this is what I did personally. Oh, you know what? We're not gonna come onto the back. We're gonna do one more thing on the belly because it's nice. So take the blanket or bolster if you have one. We're gonna to come to a nice child's pose. So there's a few options here. You can use the blocks. Sometimes they can feel a little aggressive if they're a hard cork block like this. I personally use it along my sternum, long lengthwise, and then under my head. So it almost looks like a T shape separated. So one under my head, one under my sternum. If it's too intense, I'll show you another option. But essentially, and if you can't sit on your butt, here you can use a blanket, or if you can't sit on your heels, use a blanket and lift your seat up so that the seat is anchored because that's gonna create traction and equilibrium in the pelvis and the back. So make sure that your seat is anchored on something. You can lift yourself up quite high, but let the pelvis go down and back as the arms and torso goes forward. So. First, we'll do it this way. We'll use this in a moment. And we'll come down so the knees are apart, the big toes are together. And I'll put the sternum on the first block so it's comfortable-ish. And then the block, the second block goes under my head and you'll notice that the blocks aren't tilted at all. They're totally uh, equal and stable on the mat. And then from there, oh, this feels great. I'll extend my arms forward. So it is a little hard. You can put like a thin blanket over both blocks if that feels good. But for me, I just like the height of this. It feels good on my back since I tend to thrust my back forward. So again, you'll really extend the arms. You can kind of inchworm the hands forward. And do extend the arms here for a moment if you can. If you really need to, you can relax them, but do kind of tiptoe and crawl the arms, the hands as far forward as you can before you do that. So you create that space from the pelvis into the hands. 
and breathe into the back. If this is too much for you, I'll show you now another option. If you're happy, you can stay and just listen. So if this is too much, or if you want another option, turn the blocks in the same way on the lowest level. So they just, you just turn them once down and they're still in that T shape. And then you'll put the blanket on top of that, like a folded blanket. You can also use a bolster if you have a yoga bolster. And then you'll come down this way. So you kind of have to find the blocks under the blanket and you can extend the arms forward first and then kind of wrap them underneath the blanket and turn the head to the side. So you might need to kind of scoot the block back a little bit. And if it hurts to turn the head to the side, you can flip the blanket, the top end of the blanket so it's long like this so that you can put the head on the, the forehead on the edge of the blanket and rest like this. That doesn't really work for me. You can also put the hands under the forehead, but I find that turning the head feels okay here for me since we're kind of lifted. So this is the other option. My elbows are out to the side, but I can crawl the elbows a little bit longer. So I still have space between the outer hip and the armpit. And just breathe here. Make sure you turn your head to the other side as well. You can take a few more breaths here. I'll show you one last option or you can stay as you are. I stayed here for quite a while and I did both, um, all three options when I did this practice. You can release the blanket. So again, this blanket is folded long as you'll see for that. You can also put blocks under the hands. So it's on the lowest height long so you can put them under the hands and extend them forward. Walk yourself back if you need to and you put the heel on the hand on the edge of the block. And again, you can always put your seat on a folded blanket if you need to, but the butt goes down and back and the hands go forward. And this might not feel so great, especially if you're dealing with like shoulder blade pain, but it might actually be stabilizing. So just see how you feel. This one wasn't my favorite of the three, but I tried it because I wanted to see how it felt. So breathe into your back still and just take one more breath wherever you are. Essentially, you can stay in a child's pose for like five minutes if it's possible. So start to just walk your way up from wherever you are. Take your time, take your time, and stay upright for a moment. Ooh, that did create some space in my back. It did feel nice today. And now we'll come on to the back. So take your time. Put the blocks to the side. You'll need your blanket and the strap for this. So I'll move the blocks. Come onto the back, have the blanket close by. We don't need it at this moment. And as you're on your back, just put the strap beside you and put the hands on the belly. This can actually be on the back as well, just like when we lay on the belly. So when you put your hands on the belly here, breathe into that space and envision as though you also have hands on the back of the body at the same place. So you're breathing like 360 into the cylinder of your torso. Let your collarbones widen, relax your jaw. The feet are kind of by the butt, hip width apart. And then you'll start taking your strap. You don't need the loop at this moment, but we will use it again, or take whatever you have. And you'll put the right foot in the strap. So you have a piece of hand in each strap. You put the right foot, the ball of the foot near the toes and just extend it straight up to the ceiling. So it's not towards you like the splits. It's not away from you. It's straight up. If you need to bend the knee a little bit, do your best to stack the knee over the pelvis. So it's not towards you and it's not away from you. The knee is over the hip wherever you are, but envision and act as though you could straighten the leg. And once the leg is as straight as it can be, the muscles are firm around the thigh and the knee and the heel is reaching up. So it's like a gas pedal, like you're trying to push against the gas pedal, but you're resisting it with your hands. You're pulling down with the, the hands slightly just by default because of the weight of the shoulder blades and you're pushing up with the ball of the foot. And then let the elbows widen to the side if you have space to do that. If not, 
the arms stay straight and the hands are just on either side of the strap without lifting the shoulders. So the shoulder blades kind of just plug their way down naturally. If you can widen the elbows out to the side, you widen them and you press and anchor the elbows down as you reach the heel and the ball of the foot up. And breathe here. Keep widening the chest so you don't need to scrunch the shoulders or the neck here. Relax the belly. And think of the right thigh actually pressing away from the belly instead of coming towards the belly. So the belly kind of sinks down and the right thigh presses forward away from the belly. If it's accessible, you'll extend the left leg. And if you have a wall to press into, that's the way I practiced it. And it was super nice to press the left heel into the wall and the right heel up to the ceiling. Think of the right hip coming down away from the right armpit. So that's the lifted leg. Whatever the lifted leg is, move that hip away from the armpit and that will create more equilibrium in the pelvis. This bottom leg, if it's straight, anchor it and firm the muscles like crazy. So you're curling all of the toes back towards both knees, extending through the heels. There is some activity to firm the legs, but the elbows are wide so that the chest is wide. And if the elbows aren't wide, again, the arms are just straight and the hands are up by the foot. This is a really nice way, wherever you are, the shape of the leg to equalize the pelvis. Take one more breath here. This pose is called Utita Parangustasana. Or excuse me, Supta Parangustasana. Utita is upright if we were standing. Supta is supported on the back. So first bend the bottom leg, then bend the top leg and put the feet down and take a breath. Oh yeah, that was nice. So we'll do the other side and you'll take the left foot up. Take your time if you need more time. So it's around the left foot, it goes up. You curl the toes down and extend through the heel. The muscles of the leg are firm and the thigh is moving away from the belly so the belly can relax down and widen the back. You're not trying to flatten your back here. The back, the back is just neutral. If you have space in the strap, you can bend the elbows and anchor the arms, the triceps, blades just kind of draw downward naturally, the heel and the ball of the foot push up and that weight from the arms is kind of resisting that pushing up of the ball of the left foot. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. If you can, you straighten the right leg and maybe you press the heel into the wall if you've got a wall there. And again, move the left hip or the lifted leg away from that armpit so that both sides of the torso are equal and the pelvis is equal. You're curling all the toes towards both knees, firming the muscles of both legs, especially this bottom leg. It's firming and anchoring down as the left heel or the top heel is lifting up and pressing up into the ceiling. And breathe, take one more breath. Notice if you're clenching any muscles in the face and make this pose about the legs. So the legs are active in order to create equilibrium in the pelvis and that will create space in the back. There's no pushing in the back here. Bend the bottom leg and then the top leg, put the feet down, take a breath. And we'll use the strap again in a different way. So you can look at the screen for a moment. You have this strap and you're gonna make it as long as your legs. So you kind of have to reevaluate a little bit here. Take your time, especially if you're getting up and down and you have that back pain. So it's about the length of your leg. You can do that as you're laying down too, if you understood that. So you might have to um, rearrange some things. So keep the uh, part of the adjustable part of the strap near you. You're gonna put your right thigh in this big loop. So it's literally around the part of the thigh that's closest to the pelvis. And then you're gonna put your left foot, stay with me, in the strap so that it pushes forward. And I already have to readjust, I have to make mine longer. So when you push the left leg forward, oh yeah, it feels great, once you get it. When you push the left leg forward, you kind of have to move it just a little bit to the left. And this bottom and the strap, the loop, the back loop of the strap catches the, um, the top of the right thigh. And again, you might need to like readjust a few, si few times. So just be patient with yourself as you kind of get this so that when you grab the 
back of the right thigh. So you can interlace your fingers around the back of the right thigh here and you're pushing through the left foot. You can move the left foot just a little bit to the left and push through the left foot. It'd be great if you have a wall. It actually moves the right hip down again away from the right armpit and you can kind of resist that. So there's a pressing away from the belly and then you can start to extend the right leg up if it works for you. Ideally you have straps around both, but if you don't have two straps, you just do what you can here. You might just be fine and be happy with your hands around the right thigh here. And again, as you press the left foot away from you, it also creates some traction to equalize the pelvis. And if you want, again, you can extend your right leg up and keep the shoulders soft, the collarbones wide. Just take one more breath here. Notice if you're turning the right toes or the left toes out and roll the inner thighs in towards each other and then extend through the heels and then you'll bend the top leg and then the bottom leg. If that was too much for you, you can just do the other pose that we did before this again. So take your time and you'll switch the other side. Sometimes yoga takes time, these props take some time, but it is worth it. The benefits are wonderful. So again, you extend the bottom leg, this time it's the right leg, forward and a little bit, just a little bit to the right so that it creates a lot of traction on the left thigh. It's in that crease of the thigh where it meets the pelvis. And then you can wrap your hands around the back of the left thigh if that's possible. Keep the collarbones wide. And you can relax this. I'm kind of flexing it to get some, to start to get some activity, but you can also relax it if that feels better for you. Notice if the right foot is curling and see if you can make it even. It's great if you have a wall to press into here. And then if it's accessible, you extend the left leg up. You might have to rearrange a few things. And again, roll the inner thighs in, curl the toes back and extend through the heels. Keep the collarbones wide and take one more breath. You don't have to stay here for long, but you can stay here for like two minutes if it feels really good. And then bend the top knee and the bottom knee and take a breath in the center. We're going to do one last thing with this strap. It's a little funky, but it's one of my favorites and it created a lot of nice space for me when I did this practice. So you're going to take this same loop, make sure that the adjustable part is near you in case you need it. And you'll put the ball of the right foot into the strap again and extend it up to the ceiling. So it's like almost like a basket handle, but it's in the loop and you're pushing the ball of the foot up and you have a piece of strap in either hand. The leg is perpendicular to the floor. And then you'll grab this bottom part of the basket loop or the strap and notice that the buckle is, not, is near me, but it's not gonna touch my head. So when I bring my head up, I can put the strap, I have to rearrange my hair, I can put the strap on the back of my head near the top of my ears. It's on the very bottom part of my skull. It's called the occiput, where the top of the neck the top of the cervical spine meets the bottom of the skull. And then you'll push the foot up so that the head actually lifts and the chin is kind of into the chest. It does kind of press into the top of my ears, but I'm okay here. I move the strap, the buckle's not touching me. So as I push the heel up, I can reach the arms to the side just a little bit and really relax them. Oh yeah, it feels great on the back of my neck because I'm not lifting the back of my neck. I'm kind of letting it hang out. I call it a head hammock. So as the heel presses up, there is activity in the top leg. The head rests back. The leg kind of pushes a little bit forward and up. And if you feel okay, you can extend this bottom leg. You can even move it to the side a little bit to create more space in the pelvis. So keep rolling the inner thighs in. I know I'm saying a lot of details, but they are important. And extending through the heels. So there is activity in the legs, but the head is soft. And you might have to readjust a few times. Notice if you're kind of clenching the shoulders, I just realized I was a little bit and relax them. If this is too much, you do one of the other two poses. You can repeat that first one like five times. If you feel okay here, you can kind of glide your right foot just a little bit to the right, just, just, just a little bit, not if it pulls the neck though. It might pull the neck a little bit, but if it feels nice, then that's okay. If it feels painful, you come back. And then the center and you might cross it over a little bit and let the neck just kind of move with the foot. But you're only going, I mean, a few centimeters. It's not 
that far. You're just moving the leg a little bit. And then come back to the center and keep pressing up into the strap. Let the head really relax back, the arms and the shoulders relax. And then first bend the bottom leg. Take the hands on either side of the strap by the head to lift the head just a little and then come down and take a breath here. I really love that pose. I think it's really therapeutic. Whew, I even feel it now. So notice the sensations that you feel. Just like a release of the muscles in the back of the head. It's almost like a flushing feeling. And you'll do the other side. So the head hammock, <laughs> as I call it. So you make sure that the tail isn't touching you, but maybe you have the buckle nearby and you put the ball of the left foot in the strap, reach it up, and then you take the strap behind the back of the head. So as it, the foot is pressing up, you lift the head, rearrange the hair, <laughs> and put it behind the occiput, that back of the skull where it meets the top of the cervical spine, top of the neck. And you push the foot up so that the chin naturally comes into the chest. You have to have to rearrange your ears. It's okay if they press a little bit. So press the left thigh away from you. You can even do it manually with your own hand as the heel presses up. So those are the directions. Let the hands and the arms come out to the side just a little bit, turn the palms up and let the shoulders relax. Let the head rest into the strap as the leg presses forward and up. If it's okay for you, you can extend the bottom right leg forward and a little bit, just a little bit out to the right and keep rolling the inner thighs in towards each other and reaching the heels away from you and letting the arms relax. If you can't straighten your top leg, you just do what you can and imagine as if it's going there. Like let the leg take the action of what a straight leg would be, even if it doesn't straighten all the way. But this bottom leg is a big, important anchor. So keep them firm and breathe. Notice if you're clenching anything in your shoulders, you can let the left leg drift a little bit to the left if that feels okay. Let the side of the right neck lengthen without trying to lift or manipulate the head. And then let the leg come back through the center and it maybe goes to the other side a little bit. That feels good for me, but you don't go far. The pelvis stays anchored and you keep reaching through the leg. You come back to center for a moment and take one more breath. Find some equilibrium, relax the shoulders. And you bend the bottom leg first to come out. Take the hands on either side of the head strap and lift yourself out gently. Put the head down and take a breath. So the coming into and out of the poses are just as a, are also very important. Um, the transitions are important not just being in the pose. So notice how you enter and exit a pose, especially if you have a sensitive back, literally be sensitive to the transitions as well. And just let your breath settle here. Notice any sensations. If you'd like to continue that, you can do both legs. I'll show it quickly, but you don't have to. We'll go on to something else. But if that felt really, really nice for you, you can do both feet up and the head in the strap. I did this for a little bit in my practice and it felt really nice. So both feet go forward, or the thighs go forward, the heels go up, the arms are by the side and you don't move at all. You just let yourself stay here and you let your head hang back into the head hammock and you breathe here. So you can do this for another minute or two or you can come down. To come down from this one, you keep your legs as they are, you grab the strap on the side of the head, and you bring the head up and bend the knees kind of at the same time, and then come down. Whenever you come down, let yourself really rest for a second, your collarbones spread, your belly soften, and notice any sensations, let your eyes relax. You can also widen the feet a little bit after a moment and let the knees knock in, but widen them in a way where you're not clenching any muscles in the groin or the belly. And when the knees knock in, they can touch each other and the collarbones widen and you're just breathing here, enjoying this. And we'll take a little twist to end if it's okay for you. So 
If you need to come up or roll onto the side, you can look. I'm gonna take my blanket that's right here on the couch and just fold it over once so it's a little bit thicker. And it's the width about, or about the length of my shins so that when I bring my uh, the blanket in between my uh, shins, it's my uh, legs, my thighs are about the width of my hips. I'm gonna turn to the left first. So I'm gonna bring the arms out to the side. I'm just gonna see how this feels. I'm gonna bring my knees all the way into the chest and let the heels drop by the butt. So if you have something between, maybe it's a long pillow or a bolster between your thighs and uh, shins, bring the knees to the chest. So the back is wide here and broad and bring the arms out to the side like the letter T. And just take a breath here and let the knees drop all the way over up to the left armpit. So bring them up towards the left armpit and all the way over. And if that is too much, then you come up. You can even put a long pillow underneath the knees here, but for me, it felt better to have something between them. And here the key is to relax the belly and not to push the ribs. So when you relax the belly, the back can turn and broaden and breathe into the back. Keep the arms firm. So if the right shoulder blade popped up, you might have to put something underneath the bottom shin. In this case, if the knees are coming up to the left armpit, you might have to put something underneath the left shin. Relax the belly. You can stay here longer if you need to, or you can come out, but keep the arms firm as you transition out. For me, this feels good. If it doesn't feel good to you, you can just stay with the knees into the chest, or again, you can put something underneath the bottom shin. Take one more breath. And then press down into the arms to bring the knees up. And you'll go to the other side. I need to rearrange myself here so I have space. So again, the knees come up into the chest and then up and over to the armpit. And if that doesn't feel good, you might have to come out and rearrange. There's also another twist you can do that I can show you in a moment. But if you need to put something like a long pillow, even the blocks, the blocks are just a little bit hard. Um, underneath the bottom shin, you can do that. But do bring the knees up, like you're curling up into a ball on the right side, but you're twisting. So the left shoulder blade stays down and the belly is soft here. So that might be something that you need to work on is soften the belly. I know I, I needed to when I first started these twists because they are quite deep, but it did relieve my back. For some people, twisting is not possible. And that's okay, we do what we can. So just breathe where you are, maybe you're just lying on your back. Breathe into the back ribs. And then use the firmness of the arms when you're ready. Really, really release the belly back and press down into the arms to come up and you put the feet down and remove the prop and just breathe for a moment with the feet down. Again, if you cannot twist, you can literally just stay exactly where we were. You can also take a twist with the feet wide. So you can do that now if that feels nice to open the feet wide, almost as wide as the mat and the knees bending up to the ceiling. And again, you can open your arms to the side and let the knees fall to the left here and relax the belly and that might be a little bit more gentle to you. I did both of them in my back practice and they both felt nice. So notice if you're clenching anywhere, the jaw, the shoulders, or the belly, ribs, or the pelvis, groins, and see if you can just soften and let your legs fall. If it doesn't feel good, you just stay on your back with your knees knocked in or just breathing. And then you can take the other side, rearrange yourself if you need so you have space. You can also cross the arms or grab opposite elbows above the head here if you'd like to lengthen the back a little bit more. It felt nice for me to have my arms wide today. And relax the belly. Notice where you're clenching. If it's too much, you come out. Sometimes there's like a lot of pain in the beginning, but it's not enough to come out of the pose. And after a while, after a few breaths, the pain might actually dissipate. So it's really up to you individually to discern what you need to do. 
because I still have a little bit of pain here, but it actually feels okay to be in the pose and just breathe. And it's softening a little bit. Of course, if it gets worse, you come out with as much control as you can. So come up, you can repeat that several times if that feels nice to you. Last thing, maybe last few things, grab a block, hopefully they're not far, and grab the strap again. And this is again gonna depend on what you can do today. You stay on your back. You're gonna grab the strap and uh, take it around the thighs and pull the buckle so that when you when you separate the thighs to about the width of the hips, they can't go further. So you kind of have to play with the buckle a little bit. So like you can bring the knees about right over the hips. And when you press your knees out into the strap, they can't really go further than hip width apart. The buckle can be in the middle, so it's not touching the skin. Just kind of toss the tail to the side. Put the feet down. You can also do that with the feet down. If that was too complicated to keep the knees up. So the feet are flat. The arms are by the side. This is a little bit of a back bend that we weren't going to do today actively. This is more of a passive one, but we will activate the legs a little bit. So I'm actually going to put something under my shoulders because I think I did that last time and it felt good. So I have this long blanket that I'm going to put under my shoulders. It's folded really uh, nicely, not on <laughs> the side that you're seeing, but on my side so that the folded edge is smooth. Actually, I'm going to put the folded edge uh, towards, the, towards the head side. And then when I come down, my shoulders are going to be on the blanket and my head is going to be on the floor. So I have just like a little bit of space from the top of my shoulders to the top of the blanket. And then I'm going to grab, because my blanket's not folded too thick, I can grab the edges of the mat here. I'm going to have my block close by again and bring the feet in. The, sh the shoulder blanket was helpful for my neck personally. So I lift the hips and I put the block under the pelvis. I'm going to start with the medium height because I know that that feels okay for me. You can certainly do the lowest height. You might not need a shoulder blanket if that's the case, but you see I'm on my tiptoes to rearrange and you can lift it up. The highest height was too high for me personally. Make sure it's steady so it's on the floor equally. You can put the heels down once you're there. And it's on the pelvis, it's on the sacrum, it's not on the butt where my hands are, it's not on the lower back where my hands are. It's on the pelvis, so the pelvis is equal, has an equal place to rest. And then I grab the uh, sides of the mat with my hands, and I kind of walk the shoulders under me, under me, the, uh, still on the blanket, but underneath the chest. So it's kind of like the shoulder blades are under the chest, and you're really on the triceps, on the upper arms. And press the hands, out into the uh, into the mat, that's what it is. <laughs> like you could pull the mat apart and kind of pull it away from you. And then if it feels okay, here the feet are flat and anchored, knees more or less hopefully over the heels. You can start to extend the heels kind of one by one and walk the feet. And this feels really good for me personally. This is a good height. My legs are in place, my shoulders and my neck are supported. So as you do this, you press the heels forward and away from you and press the thighs down and relax the belly. And this can lengthen the back if you're in a, an appropriate position for it. So you're not thrusting the ribs up. You can really walk the shoulders underneath you and press the arms down and the hands kind of forward and wide into the mat and extend through the inner thigh. So the inner thigh rolls down and the inner foot gets long through the heel. The outer foot draws back towards you. And really relax the belly here. This is not to harden the belly or harden the back. This can actually be really relieving and lengthening for the back and helpful for the nervous system, calming for the nervous system. But we do have to activate the arms and legs here in order to create that space in the back. So just keep the eyes calm, take a few more breaths. You can even stay here for like five minutes but it is quite intense in the legs because it's like you have weights on the top of your thighs and you're pressing out into the strap. For me, the strap is really helpful here, but you don't need it. What would be really helpful actually is if you could press your heels into the wall. It takes some rearranging of the props, but it's really great. Just take one more breath here 
and see if you can let the chest kind of soften even though it is naturally coming towards the chin. There's no pressure on the back of the neck. It's just in place thanks to the blanket or just thanks to the shape of the arms and the whole shape of the body. And then slowly, slowly walk, walk, walk your feet back. You can always stay here if the, that didn't feel good to extend the legs. And once you're here, take a breath for a moment. Oof, feels so nice. Lift the pelvis so you have to push down into the feet and see if you can lift the pelvis without lifting the heels. So one, two, three, press the heels down and lift the pelvis up without squeezing the butt or without lifting the heels and release the block, release the pelvis. Just pause for a moment. And then you can kind of wiggle yourself to the head side slowly of this blanket or to the, so that your head is on the blanket. So you move towards the pelvis side so that your head is on the blanket and just take a breath here. I like to keep my legs strapped in. Hmm. And you can keep your head on the blanket if you like, or you can come off of it. Um, we'll see how I feel, but you can take the legs out of the strap. So hopefully you feel long on all sides of the back now. And you have an option to open the strap. You don't have to. So we're gonna be in Supta Baddha Konasana for a moment. That's with a supported bound angle pose. So Supta is supported, Baddha is the feet bound, or just a bind, and Kona is an ankle as an angle like this with your knees. So the knees go out to the side like this. So you can rest here if that's nice for you. I really liked this one um, strapped personally. So I'm gonna widen the strap a little bit, slowly, slowly roll to the side to sit up and then put the strap around. So it's a big loop again, like this, put the strap around the lower back so that the buckle is nearby and I can rearrange if I need to. And then the other part is going to go around the feet like this. So you kind of bring the feet together, the knees are wide, and when you lift the feet up, it goes underneath them. And you turn so that the buckle is near you, but not touching the skin. So again, it's, kind of, it's like on the pelvis, not really the lower back, but the pelvis, I should say, the, part of, the other part of the strap, the back part of the strap. And you pull it so you're pretty tight, so I'm gonna turn so you can see the back where it is on the pelvis. And I'm gonna lay down again, make sure that I have room for my knees to widen. I might need to actually pull it tighter. You need to discern what's best for you. And then when I lay back, I might need to actually loosen it a little bit. It needs to be a little bit looser because when you go back, it's gonna tighten kind of by default. So I move my butt a little bit further away so I'm not in a back bend. I come onto my elbows first and then I find the pillow. You don't need to use it. Oh yeah. And it's kind of tractioning the lower back because of the strap on the pelvis. It's kind of lengthening it away from the upper body. You're not trying to tuck your tailbone here. It's just long and tractioned. You can bring the hands, arms out to the side and kind of gently just place the shoulder blades a little tuck under the chest and let the chest broaden naturally. You can close the eyes. We'll just take a few breaths here. We are going to sit up to finish. Let the knees open naturally whether or not you have a strap. Let all of the muscles of the pelvis and all the organs inside that area release down and wide through the legs, through the knees, the inner knees. If your knees are in a lot of pain, you can put the blocks kind of underneath uh, the outer upper thigh area. Not so much the knees, but the outer upper thighs to support the legs. But if you can let them open, it can be incredibly therapeutic for the spreading of the muscles within the pelvis and the abdominals. Also for the connection of the outer leg, outer hip. And also for like a really nice neutral spine. So notice if you're popping your ribs up or kind of like just clenching anywhere in your back, see if with each breath you can again breathe 360 all the way around the ribs. You can lay here for like five minutes if you want, a little bit longer, 
but we're gonna come up and breathe just for the sake of keeping the class relatively short. But know that you can always lay here for five, 10, even 20 minutes if it feels really, really good for you with or without props. You can even just lay flat on your back. This is really a nice posture also for uh, your menstrual cycle, for digestion, for the nervous system. So if you're strapped in, you can't really roll to the side or bring your legs together. If you don't have a strap around your legs, you can use the hands on either side of your legs and bring them together and then slowly roll up. If you're strapped in like me, you can slowly, slowly bring the chin to the chest and kind of press the elbows down and wiggle yourself up. Take your time and release the strap. So we're gonna end seated. So sit on something, and if you can, you can sit with your back against a wall. I'm gonna sit on this blanket because I have a nice long folded blanket here. I didn't really explain much about how to fold the blanket in the beginning, but just do your best to, whenever you use a blanket or a pillow or props, to make sure that it's as even as possible. So this height feels nice, it's just a little lift for me. And now it feels okay for me to cross my shins. In the beginning it didn't when I uh, first had back pain and I uh, started this practice, but by the end of the practice I felt good enough to cross my shins. And I'm gonna sit up with my kind of like shoulder blades, the bottom of my shoulder blades against this couch. It's actually really nice, a <laughs> nice uh, height, but you can sit up just against a wall. Or if it feels fine for you, you just sit upright. So sit with your shins cross just right at the center and the hands on the thighs as a gentle weight to release them. Sit high enough on something so that the knees aren't coming up towards you so that there's a descent and there can be a lift up in the torso and you can let the eyes close slowly and imagine everything we just did like the arms going up to the ceiling, the arms going behind us when we started class and that lift of the torso here. You can imagine any other poses that you remember in this sequence where the breath felt full, where the back felt full, spacious, not only at ease, but also stable. So yoga is kind of bringing together, balancing these two sides of stability, strength, steadiness, and also a quieter, softer, spacious, sweeter side. So to end with that balance, we'll take Nadhi Shodhana. It's a alternate nostril breathing. Or you can just imagine that you're doing it if you're not using your hands and you're in a happy meditative space right now. So to do that, you'll take your right hand and take your, let's see, take your, uh, your peace fingers, your index finger and your middle finger with your hands wide, bring those together and tuck them in, kind of like touching the inside pad of your thumb. You'll bring the pinky finger and the ring finger together, so they're kind of touching, almost like so you can bend the ring finger to kind of be the same height as the pinky and the thumb are free. And then you can take the thumb on the right nostril and the index or the, I'm sorry, the ring finger on the left nostril. Relax the elbow as best you can, keep sitting up tall, and they're just touching the outside edge of the bottom tip of the nostril, so they're not pressing at all, not at this moment. So sit up tall as though the chest could broaden, and breathe into the back at the same time. So there's a broadness in the chest and the back. And if it feels okay for you as you close your eyes, you can let your chin dip into your chest just a little bit without dropping the chest. So there's a lift of the torso equally on all sides, kind of almost a lift of the armpits up as the chin just easily kind of drops down into that little knob of the chest. And let your exhale come out of both nostrils. Close the left nostril with the ring finger. Inhale through the right nostril. 
pause at the top, block off both nostrils, so both of them are blocked, and when you exhale, open the left nostril and breathe out of the left nose. Pause, and then gently just let the inhale come naturally. Close the left nostril and exhale out of the right. If you're breathing faster than me, that's fine. You're just alternating. So inhale through the right nostril. Close both, exhale through the left nostril. If you're blocked in your sinuses, you don't have to close the nostrils fully. Inhale through the left nostril. Close both and exhale out of the right. So you can always have the fingers on the nostrils and just envision the breath going through one if it's too much to close them. And inhale through one nostril, blocking the other. Close both, exhale out of the other. Keep the back tall. Just the last time, inhale through the left nostril. Block both, exhale out of the right. Put the hand on the lap. And then inhale with your head down all the way through the back, all sides of the torso, full. Exhale, lift the head up slowly, keep the eyes closed. Balanced, equal, the back is full. It helps to sit against a wall for that so that the back doesn't slouch or so that you don't feel pain. The point is just to create a sense of calm balance physically because sometimes, or, and mentally, because not only do we feel physical pain when we have back issues, but also it can be really mentally, dis mentally disturbing. So that breath, Nadhi Shodhana, alternate nostril breathing, literally creates balance by breathing in through one nose and then out the other. If you don't feel it at this moment, you might just cultivate that sense inside of you right now. What does it feel like to feel balanced? Strong, steady, and also soft, spacious, whether it's in the back physically or in the brain, in the heart, mentally, emotionally. An even breath. And then bring the hands together as you're ready and let the head come down into the chest to acknowledge yourself for showing up today and trying something to support yourself, making the effort. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Please take care of yourselves. Have a great day.